Hey everybody, it's Ted here. I'm in the uh, engine lab going over ignition systems with my students. They just finished up a couple of lab sheets I've created over the years. Uh, some of the newer ones that are uh, Gen 5 even, I'm having them work on those. And I figured I would just uh, go over some of the changes in ignition systems. So for the technicians out there that uh, kind of understand this, uh, it'll be a little bit fast and furious for you, but Try to keep up on uh, what kind of goes on and what's changed. So we're going to start with Delco EST uh, carburation. Then we'll work to MEFI uh, 3 systems before we go to a MEFI 4 system. And finally, we'll go to Gen 5 and the uh, coil near plug systems. So let's get started. Okay, so first off, we have the standard old you know, carbureted three liter here, and we're gonna look at kind of how this works. So you have your ignition coil. Your ignition coil has uh, your purple wire coming from your key switch, your gray wire that goes to the tachometer, and on the bottom you have two more wires. One is pink and the other one is brown. So current from your key switch runs into the primary side of the coil. It also tees off and it comes out the pink wire, which goes into the ignition module. You then also have this brown wire and you have your gray wire. Obviously the gray wire is your secondary ignition system. So the brown wire coming into the ignition coil comes from the ICM. So you have your brown wire down here on your ICM and that wire basically is the trigger wire. So as you crank the engine over, there's a mag pickup in here, creates a pulse signal that sends a pulse signal into the ignition module then the ignition module will ground and unground that brown wire, which is the wire that is going to trigger the coil to fire. So that is your trigger wire right there. So you could check these coils for resistance. Uh, if you find the values in the book, that would be from the primary side to the negative side uh, or the coil tower um, would be your primary and secondary. And then you could also go from your primary lead to the actual secondary wire here. There is no uh, testing of the module. You can test voltage for it, and you can test for a trigger, trigger signal coming out of it. Um, this engine right now has a four wire plug on it because I just went through actually uh, how to time these distributors, and this is the shunt tool that you need to time the old carbureted engines. Okay, so I've got a MEFI uh, 3 7.4 liter here. And uh, the same thing, we have a Delco EST distributor here. Uh, the main difference between this is, you know, the coils mounted a little bit further away, but the color codes stay the same. You have your purple wire, you have your gray wire, and then on the other side, you have your pink wire, and I think it's brown. I can't see behind it, but that is the two wires that go into the ignition module. The mag pickup creates an AC pulse signal that goes into the ignition module where it's digitized, turns into a square wave. That is then the RPM signal that comes out of these four wires over here. And one of those four wires goes into the ECM as the RPM input, that's called the reference high. Uh, you have a mirror image reference low, which is kind of a backup for reference high, so the ECM has more accuracy. Uh, you also have your uh, trigger wire, which is your IC wire, and you have your bypass wire. And those two wires are how the ignition module is controlled and how the ignition circuit is controlled to the actual coil from the ECM after the engine starts. So um, below 300 RPM, somewhere around there, the ignition module is creating spark. That basically is when you're cranking the engine, 150 RPMs. The engine fires off, it races above 300, and then the module is shunted off by the ECM. So the ECM then is going to control spark timing by overriding the ignition module, much like the shunt tool does when you're doing base timing. All right, so we move on to MEFI 4. MEFI 4 is the big change. This is where all of these engines get a cam and a crank sensor. So the Delco ESD distributor disappears. So here is the flat top uh, distributor. This is a composite housing distributor. Uh, it has a three wire plug connection to it. This is a cam sensor inside. So there's no more ignition module internally. Everything that is controlled uh, by the uh, ignition system 
is direct from the ECM. So you still have an ignition control module, all right, but the ignition control module is controlled by the ECM. So the ignition control module is going to ground and unground the negative side of the coil. The ignition control module needs voltage, so voltage from the key switch goes to the ignition relay, ignition relay is energized, voltage comes down from the ignition relay, goes to the positive side of the coil, and it also goes to the ignition module. Ignition module then receives a trigger signal from the ECM, and then it grounds and ungrounds the negative side of the coil, and that's what fires the coil. So uh, you can't test internally what's in the module. You can test the coil. It's still a coil, so you can still ohm it out. Um, but what you can do with the ignition modules, you can test for voltage, you can test for ground, you can test for a trigger signal in, and then you can test to see if it's pulsing the coil. So how I always explain it is you can test what goes into the ignition module, you can test what goes out of the ignition module, but you can't test what's inside the module. There's no ohms test for that. You notice there's a heat sink here because this is a this is a, a hot unit, it gets hot. So you need some way to dissipate the heat from all the transistors inside of this, and that's what the heat sink's for. Uh, the last one I'm really gonna kind of go over over here is um, really Gen 5 and also what's on the 8.1. So we'll, we'll look at an older EGC engine here. This is an 8.1, and this is a coil near plug engine. So. Um, in this system, we have what we call smart coils. All right, so we have a four-wire plug that goes into these coils. Uh, as I said, they're smart coils, and that means that the coils themselves have transistorized switches in them. So you cannot test the windings inside these coils. Uh, again, you can test what goes in, you can test what comes out. So if you have no spark coming out of a coil, what I would recommend you do is simply swap the coil wires here, swap these two leads here, and then see if it jumps to another coil. So if I take this from this connection and I put it over here, and I take this one and I put it over there, and it jumps from this coil to this coil, then that means that that triggers no good. If this coil stays with no spark and I swap these two leads, then obviously the coil is the problem, or a spark plug or a spark plug wire. So four wires, one of them looks kind of familiar. You got a pink wire and then you got a purple wire and you got a couple more. So basically what you have is you have a high current ground, you have a low current ground, you have the power supply which comes from the ignition relay, and then you have the trigger signal that comes from the ECM. So these, these coils, and there has been, I don't know how many different versions of this system, but there's probably four or five different versions of this coil on 8.1. So uh, my thing is, if I'm going to come down here and I'm going to work on a, you know, an older 8.1 GI-J, I need to get that serial number right there. And that's the only way I'm going to look up a coil for this engine. I'm not going to guess on that um, because there are different versions and different voltages. It's the same thing as spark plugs. The spark plugs are not all the same by any means. So these coil near plug systems are, are not too complex. And the nice thing about these systems from MEFI 4 on is if you have a scan tool, uh, you can actually disable each cylinder one at a time and do what's called a cylinder balance test. So with Diacom, you can do that. It's a really nice feature to do that. Um, all of your Gen 5 engines here work on the same principle. Nothing really new there. The only big difference, obviously, is these are uh, sequentially injected, okay? And that really starts with the EGC platform. So this is a 4.3. This one has the flat top distributor. It has the new e-controls processor on it. Uh, it still is a sequentially injected engine. So anything after MEFI 4 is sequential injection from the, the land of Volvo. So do that there's so many different ignition systems for these engines. Actually, over the years, I've created these uh, test labs, lab sheets. Um, and these labs are for different version engines in different years. And my students have to go through each of these to do diagnostics and learn and see how the wiring schematics and how to trace them out. So we go into this pretty much in depth into what I just told you about these and actually get into the test points um, using multimeters, obviously, uh, to test that. And that's to test what goes into the ignition system, right? Everything from ignition voltage, from the 
uh, carbureted days, going down to the ignition coil. Um, you know, I still even teach points ignition. Just an introduction to that, to a points distributor, put in a vice, show them how to do dwell angle. You never know, you might be working on something old like my 1969 Buick Electra with points ignition. So I still show them how to set points, dwell angle, and how that applies to these ignition systems. So hopefully you liked the video, maybe you uh, picked up a few tidbits here on how they work and how to diagnose them. Um, the later model, anything late model, really you need a scan tool as a tool of choice to help you start with um, where the problem lies. All the new engines, if there's ignition faults, uh, if you lose a driver, then you're gonna have a code for that. So there's pages and pages of codes for uh, late model Gen 5 engines and EGC engines. The early model MEFI engines, a little harder to diagnose, um, but still, uh, like MEFI 4, you can do a cylinder balance test, and that can point you to which cylinder is misfiring or doesn't have any spark. So if you liked the video, hey, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.